By the summer of 1918, German forces along the Western Front in World War I were stronger than they had previously been, and that's because of the fact that months earlier, the Russians sought a separate peace and ended the two-front war that had been so significantly sapping German strength. The Germans were therefore able to concentrate everything on the Western Front. And so in the spring of 1918, they launched this massive offensive. The offensive operation pushes forward until eventually along the road running between Paris and Metz, the spring offensive collides with the U.S. Army's 2nd Infantry Division. But in addition to that, fighting as a brigade attached to the 2nd Infantry Division were U.S. Marines. U.S. Marines from the 5th Marine Regiment and the 6th Marine Regiment were then pushed forward between June 1st and June 26th in an engagement between places called the Triangle Farm, Hill 142, and then eventually also Bella Wood. It might have been said that Forrestal looked at that flag on Mount Suribachi in February 1945 and said, that just guaranteed you a Marine Corps for the next 500 years. But it was Bella Wood that made that happen. Bella Wood's only 35 miles from Paris. I mean, this is the critical point of World War I. Had the Germans kept pushing through and taking Paris, the war's gonna be over. On June 2nd, 1918, a man from not far from where I live today made history here. He put a phrase into the lexicon of the United States Marine Corps. His name was Lloyd Williams. He was a captain commanding the 51st Company of the 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines. This is north of Lucy Le Bacage. And the Marines were coming up to reinforce the French from the German attack. And the local French commander said to Captain Williams, the Germans are coming, you must, you must retreat. To which Williams said, retreat hell, we just got here. As the Germans continued to push the French back towards Belleau Wood, they experienced something at La Mer Farm that they hadn't seen, long range precision marksmanship. These guys were not marksmen, they were expert marksmen at what they were doing, and it told. It told on the battlefield. The Germans were absolutely gobsmacked at how effective Marine riflemen were. Marksmanship in the United States military wasn't necessarily a thing until after 1871. Uh, the National Rifle Association uh, was formed to promote marksmanship on a scientific basis. And what came out of this was a National Guard and civilian interest in long-range precision marksmanship that eventually jumped to the regular army. At one time, the regular army was not focused on anything more than making sure soldiers could kind of shoot. After the NRA became involved, and especially after the debacle of the Spanish-American War, marksmanship mattered. The 1903 rifle was effectively a modification of the Mauser design. And the 1903 rifle was equipped with a precision, almost a competition sighting system. This lent itself very, very well for the experience of delivering accurate rifle fire in combat on the Western Front. And Marines are particularly well regarded for being expert riflemen. As the Germans approached, the sergeants called out the range and the Marines set their sights on their 03 Springfield rifles. The Marines opened up on them at 800 yards and they started killing Germans. In that particular attack against the 2nd Battalion, no German got within 200 yards. And there was a reason for it. The U.S. Marine Corps was serious about marksmanship. They'd win trophies at Camp Perry. They'd win inter-service matches. In short, when the Marines came to France, they knew how to shoot. The area that comprises Bellow Wood today is in the care and management of the American Battle Monuments Commission. It looks a little different than it did then because most of the trees are not blasted by artillery. It's a peaceful place that belies the horrible slaughter that took place here. It is, however, available to anyone who cares to visit, and there are a number of different places where you can see original artillery, both in an artillery park and in their original emplacements, along with trenches and gun emplacements. 
The wheat field where the Marines entered the Bellow Wood is still grown by local farmers with wheat. Shane Williams, the superintendent here at the Enmarn Cemetery, told me a story of a very special Marine. This Marine is Walter R. Cornell. Gunner Cornell was probably one of the oldest men in the 6th Marines when they came here. And he had a long career you'd expect for an enlisted Marine. But his career ended here, but it didn't end without inspiring younger Marines. You see, Cornell was quite a marksman. And he would go out every day and shoot Germans. He was a good shot. And every day the young Marine said he would come back and carve notches in the stock of his 1903 Springfield rifle. Well, eventually they called in artillery on him. And one day, Gunner Cornell didn't come back. Gunner Cornell was serving with the U.S. 2nd Division, which of course was under Army command. So he was awarded not only the Navy Cross, but the Army Distinguished Service Cross. And Gunner Cornell is here in France today. The Marine Corps is trained marksmen and very proud of it. When it comes to going in and taking Bellow Wood, they again, they form up the way they've been told to form up for an assault. And it really results in horrific, horrific casualties. Because Major Bishop, who is in commanding the Germans, has set up Maxim 08s and 0815 machine guns throughout the woods in echelon and supporting fire. So you take one machine gun nest, you come under fire from another one. The Marine Corps lost more men that first day at Bella Wood than all the Marines killed in its entire existence up to that date. When the American Expeditionary Force set out for France, they had rifles, they had men, but they didn't have machine guns. The decision was made to rely on our allies for automatic weapons, both heavy machine guns and light machine guns. Here at Bella Wood, the Marines that were forced to take this brutal ground didn't have Browning automatic rifles because they were barely in production. They didn't have Lewis guns. Their Lewis guns were taken from them because the U.S. Air Service needed them and the French could not supply 30-06 ammunition. The Marines entered these woods with the Hotchkiss Model 1914 in their machine gun companies and their squads had show show Model 1915 automatic rifles. They're fighting, of course, with foreign-made machine guns, with foreign-made artillery, with domestically produced rifles in the form of the 1903 and the 1917. But then they're also well-equipped with pistols, pistols that have a little bit of muscle to them. The United States goes to war in 1917 and brings war to the enemy in 1918, carrying 45 caliber pistols. The John Moses Browning design with a seven plus one capacity firing a 230 grain 45 caliber bullet. Nobody had anything that big except us. But in addition to usage of the model 1911 pistol in World War I, American fighting forces are also equipped with the model 1917 revolver. And this is a six shot 45 ACP chambered double action revolver. This gave American fighting forces the largest caliber handgun on the battlefield in World War I. The fighting in Bellow Wood was some of the most savage of World War I, and it has entered into Marine Corps legend today. And there's good reason for that. Reasons provided by men like John J. Kelly. John J. Kelly was a private in the 68th Marines, and he lived through Bellow Wood, he fought through San Miguel, all the Marine campaigns, all the way up until October 6th. On that day, he was acting as a runner for his company, the problem was, Private Kelly's rifle had been lost to enemy action, and yes, the Marine Corps made him pay for it. On that day, he ran 100 yards through a barrage to an enemy machine gun nest and used a grenade first, killing one gunner, and then his Colt model of 1911 pistol to kill another gunner. Then he took eight prisoners and marched them back through that barrage. For those actions, Private John J. Kelly was awarded the Medal of Honor. But Kelly was an Irish nationalist, and he didn't want to receive an award from the King of England. The takeaway that I've had 
regarding Bella Wood and the significance on the outcome of the war is that individuals, small groups of individuals, small groups of Marines can change the course of history. Bella Wood is roughly 30 miles outside Paris. The war had been going on for years. Casualties were horrific. And the fact that two regiments of Marines, the 5th and 6th Marines, were able to take on six divisions of Germans and stop that attack in place, it just indicates that when you have dedicated servicemen and women in today's world who are willing to give their all, uh, they can make a tremendous difference in the future of history. And, and the Marines at Bellawood did that.